Hey, what do you know? Looks like we're live. Hope everyone is doing well. Oh, so good to see some channel members here. How are you? Mega, Linda. Danny's here. Mode Eggs is here. What do you know? Hey, how is everybody? So in today's lesson, we're actually going to read from an article. I think one of the best ways to improve your English is reading. And if you can read, you will eventually be able to speak. But in my mind, I think the reading comes first. And you know what's another way to learn English? Listening. And we're going to do both of those today. You can listen to me read the article and you can read right along with me. So Chef Ketz here from Turkey. Welcome. Yeah. Hey, um, before we get too far, if you're watching on replay, welcome. If you're watching live. Well, how are you? If you're listening on the podcast, there will be links in the description for the article because you can't see the article on the screen and there will be links to the vocabulary lesson I did before. Um, another thing, hey, if you're watching live or on replay, you might hit that like button and maybe you have a friend who's learning English. Yeah, share this video with them. Might help them out quite a bit. I have a disclaimer and what a disclaimer is in English is like a warning before we start. There are some Russian names and I know there are some Russian viewers. So I will admit, I probably can't say the Russian names perfectly. And for that, I apologize before we get started. But the article is from a site. I can share it right here from a site called Dojo News. And like I said, there is a link in the description if you want to read this at a later time. But if not, I say, let's get right to the reading. If you uh, would like to ask a question, just put it in the chat. I'll be checking the chat every so often. Look at this. Oh, hey. It's like... One of Karis's students is here, English Arts Academy. Yeah, if you don't follow her channel, check her out. She's great. Hey, Modags. Yeah, there was a disclaimer on the Bitcoin lesson that I did. Yeah, not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Hey, Madi, how are you? Cecilia is awesome about sharing lessons. She is always sharing them. So thank you, Cecilia. Thank you. So, so nice to see so many people here. Semra from Turkey's here. I hope all is going well in France, Danny. So let's get to this article here. Russian crew is the first to film a fiction movie in space. So when you hear fiction, think fake. And I talked about that in the lesson I did. Now let's look at um, this picture here for a second. So usually um, in English, maybe it's different in Arabic, but for people who speak English and probably French and Turkish, our eyes usually look at a picture on the left first. So when I looked at this picture, I saw this woman here. At first, I'm like, wow, she might be the prettiest astronaut I've ever seen. So in the United States, we say astronaut. But in Russia, it's a cosmonaut. And even in English, if it's a Russian astronaut, we do. We say cosmonaut. So I looked at her. I was like, wow, she's, she's very pretty. Then I looked at the, uh, the guy in the middle. I was like, eh, yeah, he looks like a cosmonaut. Sure. And I looked at this guy on the right. I said, whoa, he's a pretty good looking guy too. And as we read, you'll find out that the... Uh, the two on the left and the right, hang on, I think I can put flanking. Let's, let's learn a new term here, flanking. This is often used in war, but it means to the side. So an army could flank another army by going to the side, but we could use it here for this picture. So the man in the middle is flanked by actors on both sides. 
So the woman on the left is an actor, or we might say an actress. And the man on the right is an actor, which is probably why they are so darn good looking. Like, wow, astronauts, cosmonauts. Good looking. Ario from Indonesia. How are you? All right, so let's start reading here. And again, with the names, oh boy, I hope I do well. Feel free to correct me in the chat if I'm totally wrong. Space-related films have come a long way since A Trip to the Moon. A silent movie with no camera movement or close-ups was released in 1902. Now, here is a phrase in this sentence that I would like to talk about. And that is, have come a long way. Have come a long way. It means to improve over time. So I can use this with your English, I hope. Let's say last year at this time, October 2020. Think about your English back then. How was it? I'm hoping if you've studied every day, you know, your English has come a long way. It means to improve over time. So I, I know some of you have been around here for at least a year, and I know your English is, is getting a lot better, a lot better. Welcome. Oh, I don't know. That's, I think that might be Arabic or Persian, but uh, if it is, how are you? Even if it's not, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. I'm glad, Ario, Ario, it's a great question. As we go along, you will hear that quite a bit. So I just did a uh, lesson on the road, on the road. I think I released it a couple days ago. So I went to a hotel. So I left my house and went to a hotel. And along the way, I had to stop and use the bathroom. Along the way, I had to stop and get some snacks. So on your English journey, along the way, I'm sure you've had success. I'm sure you've had some setbacks or some failures. So along the way, it just means as you do something through time along the way. So feel free to ask questions in the chat like Ario did along the way as we go through this lesson. Yeah, Mega has been here for way more than a year, I think. Like almost a year and a half, I think. I started the channel uh, about a year and a half ago. So what is this? What's Mode say? I'm, I'm always nervous about Mode. He's, he's quite the trickster. He was trying to guess the meaning of flank in Arabic. Oh, Mode. Mode knows Arabic really well, knows English really well, and I think he knows French pretty well. All right, let's continue with the article here. Make it a little bigger. So the next sentence. Filmmakers, see, just so you know where I'm at, I'm right here. Filmmakers now use the extensive technology at their disposal to immersively transport fans to alien worlds. My goodness, there is a lot in that. Now, if you watch the video that I did for vocabulary, you might know extensive already. But let's talk about at their disposal. That's a pretty common term. And I do have something right there. At their disposal. It means they have a lot of tools that they can use. A lot of things that can help them. So when you are learning English, some things you have at your disposal is YouTube. That is something you can use to help you. There are so many great English teachers on YouTube to help you learn English. And I do want to thank you for tuning in to this lesson because there are a lot of really good English teachers and you chose this English teacher. Thank you so much. At their disposal. So filmmakers now have a lot of tools at their disposal they can use immersively. Immerse. You might hear that word quite a bit. You might even immerse yourself in English. If you immerse yourself in English, that means you are listening to English 
every day, you try to live your life in English as much as possible. Maybe you've changed the language on your phone to immerse yourself in English. It just means to completely surround yourself in English. The next sentence, how about I highlight it? Oh no, I'll highlight, I'll read this part here. And this is the first time I have some Russian names that I am going to botch. I am going to botch. B-O-T-C-H, botch. That means when you really mess something up badly, you botch it up. I'm going to botch these names right here. So I apologize to anyone who knows Russian really well. Mo, do you know Russian too? French, English, Arabic? I bet you do. However, no one has attempted to shoot a feature film in space until now. On October 5th, 2021, astronauts at the International Space Station, or the ISS, welcomed their first fiction film crew, Russian actress Yulia Peresild and director Clem Sherpenko. There's no way I got those two names correct. I'm pretty sure I got Yulia right. So we got fiction there. That means fake. The ISS, I'm not sure what you call it in your language, but oftentimes you can actually look up in the sky and you see this bright white light flying across the sky. That's the International Space Station. That's what we call it in English or the ISS. So up there, there are definitely uh, Americans. I believe there are Chinese astronauts, Japanese astronauts. Definitely Russian cosmonauts, probably a few others. France, I think France, Danny, I don't know. I think France has a couple astronauts up there. So international, kind of a big word there, but international, it means many nations, many nations. So the International Space Station, many nations are represented up there. Let's see. I'm going to look through the comments to see if I've missed anything. Oh, Chef Cat, is that true? I think Chef Cat is making a joke here, but it's pretty funny. If we could achieve someday to go into space, we prepared a name. Turkonaut. Okay, the Turkonauts from Turkey. Well, I hope one day the Turks can get up into the ISS. Are they not there already? Maybe they're there already. I heard about the um, Turkish financial crisis. Yeah, I think... Turkey is starting to see some of that inflation that Argentina and Venezuela and Zimbabwe has seen lately. I hope it doesn't get too bad for you. Anya. Yeah, absolutely. Come a long way. Yeah, I remember speaking to Anya oh, last summer, I believe it was, and Mega. Totally different now. They've come a long way. Yeah, great job. Great job. Miho, is she here today? I didn't see Miho. If you're here, welcome. Ah, Mariposa. Good question. What's a close up? Um, I'm gonna do one right now. So it's it's with film. It's always with film. So it could be photography or it could be video. But when you get a close up on like my face, it means I would. We use an English phrasal verb called pan in. So with the camera, I would pan in on my face. That's, it's easier for me to do a close-up of my hand. So you get close up to the object. You can do it in photography or you could do it in video. So nice. Oh, Italian. Benvenuto. Make a meal. Oh, yeah. Chef Cat. I've gotten to know Chevcat in the Discord server. Chevcat's a funny guy. Chevcat went on a trip too. Thanks for sharing those pictures, by the way. Um, though, yeah, you maybe younger people, but not too many people use that T H O. We usually spell it out T H O U G H. T H O U G H. All right, back to the article. Where is it? There it is. So we've already read the 
highlighted blue. So let me get this right here. Let's do this. Oh, geez. I see some more Russian words. I might just skip them. Two civilians and a veteran cosmonaut, Anton Shapirkov, arrived at the ISS aboard the Soyuz 2 rocket. Parasild and Shapinko will spend 12 days filming a 35 to 40 minute segment for a feature film dubbed The Challenge. I'm not even going to try to, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Wait, what happened? What happened? I don't want that. We get rid of that. Um, yeah, so, well, cosmonauts there. We knew what that meant. But what we were talking about here, I do want to highlight dubbed because that might be new for some people. If you dub something in this way, it means you've named it something, okay? So um, I've dubbed this English lesson, read a news article with a real English teacher. So it's just another way to say you've named something, you've dubbed it. The movie tells the story of a surgeon played by Pierre Sild going to space to operate on a sick cosmonaut whose medical condition prevents him from returning to earth for treatment. Surgeon. In that sentence, that might be the most difficult one because we've talked about cosmonaut. Surgeon, I'm wondering, in the chat, does anyone know what surgeon means? While I wait for those answers, Sita, I would like to thank you so much for the super chat. That is so nice of you. So nice of you. Every little bit does help out the channel. Thank you so much. She's already a channel member living in Brazil. We spoke a little earlier on discord this week. And right now I am watching a YouTube channel that I love Harold Balder. I mentioned him in five non English teacher YouTube channels you could watch to improve your English. And he is in Brazil right now. He recorded a haircut video a couple days ago. And I think I'm going to record a haircut video in just a minute, probably like this week sometime. I don't think today, but maybe today. But Sita, thank you so much for the super chat. This is for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yes, very generous. Thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, you help out the channel each month by being a member. Super chat, so nice. So thank you very much. Surgeon, did anybody? Oh, you, you don't have to be a member. You don't have to be a member. It's okay. Yeah, stop by. You're helping the channel too. Thank you. You can always give uh, the video a like if you would like, and that really helps out as well. So thank you. Surgeon, I don't, oh. You know who has it? Anya. Anya has it. Oh, Mode has it too. Look at that. Mode and Anya. Yeah, it's some... Oh, Mariposa. There's a lot of a lot of correct answers. Nice job. Yeah, it's a doctor who specializes in surgeries. So this person might be a heart surgeon or they might be a brain surgeon. We also have an English. If something is easy... We'll say, it's not brain surgery, meaning it's not that hard. I'm not going to say that English is brain surgery, but I would never say that English is easy. Learning another language is very difficult, especially as an adult. And I know you are all adults here, even Ario. I think Ario is 16, but close enough. Hey, looks like we got a new channel member, I think. Manuel, welcome. Welcome to the to the channel. Hey, um, I got a little something for you, and then I'm going to uh, tell you a couple things that you could do. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. Yeah, so um, check out that community tab. I will put a link to the Discord server 
after this lesson, and then you can join us on Discord. We, we chat throughout the week. We share the dishes we're eating. We share the places we are traveling. And um, sometimes I share some secrets. So there was a video yesterday I, uh, I made for members. There are a couple secrets in there. I don't want everyone to know, but I figured channel members, it would be okay. All right, let's get to, hey, yeah, definitely watching movies. Bob the Canadian. I'm a big fan of Bob the Canadian. And yesterday during his live stream, he mentioned how if you watch movies, it's a really good thing. But he had a really good point. And that is if you watch television shows, you know, it's a longer period of time. You can get to know the characters even more. So movies, TV shows, watching those will definitely help you improve your English. That's where the listening comes in. And then if you have the visuals, the pictures on the screen, it helps you with the comprehension. If you're just starting out, maybe A2, you know, A1, it might be a little difficult, but you know, a year or two, if you're, if you're um, watching movies, you could put the subtitles on the subtitles in English. I don't think it works as well in your own language, but if you can put the subtitles in English and then as you get better, take away those subtitles. Yeah. I think that'll be helpful. Yep. Samara welcoming our new channel member and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you in there soon. Discord. It's good stuff. Yeah, Marty. We missed you in the discord. All right, let's get back to the article. What's the next thing we're going to read? Hopefully not more Russian names. I'm so bad at that. But if you know Russian, I think that says space. Didn't they say, did they say that was going to, no, the ch maybe the challenge, the challenge. There it is. Prior to blasting off. Prior, that's just another way to say before. Prior, just a little more formal. Prior to blasting off into space, Parasild, who beat out more than 3,000 candidates for the role. Let's talk about that right there. Who beat out. There's an English phrasal verb there. And that just means that she won. There were 3,000 candidates for the job. And all that means candidate is someone who's going for a job. So if you have a job interview, they might tell you, well, we're trying to narrow it down to two candidates and then we will bring them back for an interview. So a candidate is somebody who is going for a job. If you are going for that job, hopefully you beat out everyone else who's going for the job. It just means you win. That, like we do have the verb to beat, you know, you beat somebody up. That's another English phrasal verb. You hurt them really badly, but it doesn't have to be physical. So if you are competing, um, even in like football match. So if two teams are competing, you can say one team beat out the other team. Usually actually beat out would be more than one person or one team. Yeah. Yeah. As I'm saying that right now. So you could say one team beat the other team, but if they're in a tournament, you might say they beat out three other teams to win. Beat out. Learn something new every day in English, even when you're teaching it, which I just did. All right. Next part of the sentence here. And Shapinko underwent an intense four month long training. We talked about intense in the other video I did. Let's see here. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of big words here, but don't worry, I'm an English teacher. I can handle it. There are I think three or four right in this paragraph that are in that other that the words are in the other lesson I did. So you may want to go back and watch those. They were subjected to conditions such as zero gravity suspension and high speed acceleration inside a centrifuge. It was difficult psychologically, 
physically and emotionally. But I think when we reach our goal, all the challenges won't seem so bad, Parasild said at a pre-flight press conference on October 4th, 2021. Maybe one word here I want to talk about um, because I've talked about so many in the other one, but centrifuge. You will probably never need to know this in English. I don't think we talk about it very much and I you probably don't talk about it in your own language either, but a centrifuge is basically something that astronauts train in or maybe pilots will train in and it spins them around really fast so that they can get used to the zero gravity effects that happen to the body. Some people pass out. It's an English phrasal verb there. If you have any questions about any of this, let me know in the chat. Okay. Um, Bob the Canadian, again, uh, I think he had a question yesterday about used to. Used to. So used to was a difficult one because it, it could mean, oh, I used to study English, but I've stopped, which is nobody here. You're all studying English. Good for you. Or you can say, oh, I've gotten used to the English language. It means you've become familiar. You understand it now. So those cosmonauts had to get used to the zero gravity effects on the body. This is an advanced lesson, isn't it? This is an advanced lesson. Yes, as Anya is saying, if you're watching this and you're totally confused by some of these words, thank you, Anya. Anya is great. Anya is great. I think she's also a moderator here too. So thank you, Anya. Um, you can go back and watch that video. I think there are 13 words that I picked from here. Most of them are in blue. And I talked about them in that video a couple days ago. Yeah. Similar to a washing machine manual. New channel member already contributing. Yeah, if you think of a, a washing machine, when it goes around, especially in English, we call it the spin cycle. And that's the last part of the washing machine where it goes around really quickly to try to get the water out of your clothes. Hello there. How are you? There's a centrifugal force mode. Whew. It's a big one right there, right? Centrifugal force. So <laughs> let's, let's talk about what Mo just said there because I think it might help others out. So centrifugal force is what we say in English when you spin around at the fair or at the amusement park, at least in the United States, there is a ride that you get in and it will spin you really quickly and you actually stick to the wall and then they will drop the floor. That is centrifugal force. Centrifugal force keeps you against that wall um, because it's actually pushing, uh, oh, he didn't say G forces, but the G forces is what we call the force of gravity sometimes on you. Uh, it's not rocket science though. It actually is pretty difficult though. So if something isn't that difficult, Mo just used, it's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. We use that in English all the time. If something isn't too difficult, it's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. But again, remember, uh, English, English is pretty tough. All right, back to the article. Thank you, Mode, for that. I'm going to highlight this next paragraph here. And it, wait, let me talk about this for a second. In addition to, mm, you know, one thing that really bugs me when some English teachers do this, and I just don't think they know the English language that well when they say this, I'm going to put out a video on this pretty soon, but they'll have a big X and they'll have the word and like, no, don't say and instead say in addition to. If you're speaking with a friend, even in a job interview, don't get rid of and. And is a very basic word that we use all the time. Now, if you're in a job interview and you want to say in addition to once or twice, hey, 
go for it. But don't cross out and. You need and. Now here, informal writing, in addition to, is a great transition. I talk about this with my students all the time. It's a great transition. So just to get into a little writing here, we call these things paragraphs. So when you have, and I've, I think I've used that word a couple times, but this is a paragraph. This is another paragraph right up here. We call those paragraphs. It's easier for the brain to organize words into paragraphs. So this is a, a, a transition would be right at the beginning of another paragraph in addition to is a great transition. And I say, if you're writing an article, use it once. Use it once to go from one paragraph to the other. But these English teachers on Instagram that put the big, no, I think they, it seems to me, they're saying, don't use and. I am saying, as a native English speaker, I use and several hundred times a day. Sometimes that is the only word that works. All right. I'm going to calm down now a little bit. That, that video, I need to film it, but there's a whole bunch of them. I put it on my phone. Like, uh, I think it has the, uh, the English teacher's name on it. So I don't want to show it, but it's, it's, it's nobody I've, uh, you know, it's nobody that you, it's nobody I've I've spoken about on it's an it's a teacher I saw on Instagram but it's like what say and come on all right moving on moving on was that Ario learning English while learning Western culture yeah what do you think certainly I know so Ario's from um, Indonesia it's almost impossible not to learn about the culture while learning another language. That's for sure. As I've been learning Italian, I think I've learned a lot about the Italian culture. I think that just happens when you're learning another language. You will also learn about the culture. So awesome. Awesome. What's that? Okay. Mode um, has a question about writing. Okay. So do you tend to use indention at the beginning of each paragraph? It seems to me that it's an older style of writing. Yeah, you can do one of two things mode. So the way this article is written, they are not skipping lines here. There, there isn't, if there was a bigger space in between these lines, we would call that double spaced. So if it's double spaced, you would indent. But if it's single spaced like this, these, uh, if you don't know what indenting means, it means the beginning of the paragraph is pushed in a little bit. This is getting really advanced, isn't it? It's pushed in a little bit. So this is single spaced. So you skip a line in between each paragraph. If it was double spaced, which my students usually do on a Google Doc, they will double space and then you can indent. Mm, I hope that helps. What's that? Oh no, this is one of my students. Hey, <laughs> one of my students in my own classroom. They know English pretty well, but welcome, welcome. Yeah, as well as, it's a good alternative. I like what you said there, Madi. It's an alternative. It's not something that will replace and every single time. Oh, thanks, Cecilia. All right, back. Um, what is this, Mickey? The word to, in addition to, is it a preposition? In addition to, mm, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. In addition to, I would, I don't know. I don't know. So if you're going somewhere, like moving towards something, like I am going to the store, that's the prepositional, that's the preposition there in that sentence. But uh, I'm not sure about, and in the in the grand scheme of things, I would say it actually doesn't really matter. Um, I am one of those teachers that thinks you don't need a whole lot of grammar to speak English. You need a lot of reading. You need a lot of listening. But as my students will tell you, we do not spend a lot of time 
uh, on grammar and native English. I believe it's more important important to read. And then in that way, you will get the grammar without even knowing it. I mean, it takes lots and lots of reading. But I think uh, um, like the, the conditional, I the first conditional, second conditional, I don't know them. I don't know what that means. And I would say, if you were learning English and you want to speak English well, you do not need to know what the first and second conditional is. Am I even using that correctly? I mean, you don't even need to know what a gerund is. You need to know how to use it. And I think with lots of listening and lots of reading, you will just understand it without even knowing what a gerund is. Hope that helps. Uh, mode. Yeah, double spaced. It does make the article seem a little longer. Yeah. You can increase the font size. So one thing that I ask my students, we have a big writing project coming up in the next couple of weeks. I will ask them to use Times New Roman font. That's what we call it in English. And 12 point font, 12 point font. Yeah, so a little, a little tricky, a little tricky there. Um, ooh, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, not really related to this article, Andre, but, um, you would use there is when there's one thing like, Hey, and you know what? We would probably just say there's there's with an apostrophe S. Hey, there's a bird over there. One bird. Hey, there are a bunch of birds over there. And then if they fly off, if they go away, oh, there were some birds over there, but uh, but you missed it. So it's kind of like past tense. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. All right. There's the question again. All right. Let's get back to the article. Let's get back to the article. Okay. Wait, hang on. Another writing question. I, I don't talk about writing on this channel very much. So Mega's a channel member. If she has a, a question about writing, let's talk about writing for a second. This is probably the only time we would, right? Um. Oh, okay. So, um, also mega does mega does the other, the only other font that most like college professors or high school teachers would accept would be Arial. So it's either times new Roman or Arial. And, uh, if you want a little secret, like mode was talking about with the double spacing, the Arial font, it takes up more space. It makes it look a little longer. So I often use Arial when I have to write something. If I'm given the choice between Arial and Times New Roman, I go Arial. Makes it look longer. Okay, back to the article. In addition to, in addition to being the first actress to film a movie in orbit, Parasild is also only the fifth Russian woman to travel to space. Hey, Girl power, we might say in the United States. Girl power, the fifth Russian woman to go up into space. So not only is she an actress, she had to go through all the training to get up into space. Only five women, Russian women, have been into space. So congratulations. I wish I could say your name properly, but congratulations. Next part here. Let me highlight it. Shapinko is making his own history as the first director, makeup artist, sound editor, and cinematographer of a feature film shot in space. All right, really quickly, a director, it's like the boss of the movie, the person in charge. The makeup artist, um, I think I have a couple lessons on this page about makeup, but some people will put makeup on their face because they think it makes them look better. It will hide their flaws or hide their blemishes. So a makeup artist applies makeup to most likely actors. Uh, what was the other one? A cinematographer, I think it was. A cinematographer. Um, don't really need to know that, but it's, uh, it's just someone in charge of making everything look nice on the film making like the color stand out, making sure the lighting is perfect. And the other one was sound editor. 
So making sure microphones work perfectly, making sure the movie sounds great. How about that? Probably things you'll never need to know in English unless you go into the movie industry or the television industry. Meanwhile, Shapirkov and Russian cosmonauts Oleg Nodvitsky and Petro Dobrov, sorry, who are currently at the ISS, will make their first acting debut and a cameo appearance as the space station's crew. So debut, that was one of our words from the other lesson, like the first time ever. Like an actress might make her debut on stage. It's the first time she's ever been on stage in front of an audience. Cameo. Sometimes movies have cameos. One of the most famous cameos or people who do who did cameos. He's no longer around. Um, but if you've ever seen the Marvel movies, Stan Lee, the guy who like created most of the Marvel characters, um, he would make a cameo in every film. You would see him only for a few seconds. He was in the film. He might say a couple things and then kind of disappear. That is a cameo. That is a cameo. All right. Is that the end of the article? Nope. Not the end of the article. We have two more paragraphs. Let me make this bigger for you. Ah, Sita. I, I do have my glasses here just in case, but uh, I'm doing all right without my without my glasses somehow. I think I'm reading a, reading a, hey, Mode, you're fine. It's all right. I took, Mode is apologizing, but hey, I, I didn't have to take the question. I did. I thought it might be helpful to everybody else. What is that? I think my Italian friend, they were listening to Motley Crue. Oh my gosh. Were they listening to Dr. Feelgood? Girls, girls, girls. Yeah, Danny, I think debut is French, isn't it? We have a lot, a lot of French in the English language. And the reason is in 1066, the year 1066, the French invaded England and forever changed the English language, which is why we have so much Latin influence. It's because of the French. So the French had a, a tremendous impact on the English language. You know, a little over a thousand years ago in 1066. 1066. All right, let's get back to the article here. Get back to the article. This paragraph. Parasild and Shapinko will return to Earth on October 17th, 2021. So I guess they're back already. This time around, they will be accompanied by Novitsky, who will have completed his term at the ISS by then. He will be replaced by Shapirokov, who will remain there until March 2022. Accompanied? It just means, oh, well, I pulled that up. Okay. It just means to go with, to go with. Or you can read, read a lot. Look at, see, that's a more complicated definition there. To go along or in company with. We could just say to go with. Hey, I'm going to accompany a friend on a walk. I'm going to go with a friend on a walk. Hopefully that helps. Get rid of that. Last paragraph here. <clears throat> this is the first science fiction movie filmed in space. It will probably not be the last. American actor Tom Cruise is rumored to be collaborating with SpaceX founder Elon Musk for a yet to be revealed project. And if you've watched, um, oh, why do I keep doing that? If you've watched the video that I did before, we talked all about collaborating, meaning working with William Shatner. The man is 90 years old. He was an actor back in the night. He still is an actor, but in the 1960s, he became famous uh, for Star Trek, Star Trek, which they mention here. 
William Shatner will also be heading to space. However, the famed actor, best known for his role as Captain Kirk in the Star Trek series, will not be working. He will be enjoying the spectacular views of Earth aboard Blue Origin's second crewed spice, space flight scheduled for launch on October 13th, 2021. The 90 year old will also make history as the oldest person to fly in space. And if you want to see a picture of good old William Shatner, he's the man in the middle right there. All right, let's see. Any last minute questions? Tom Cruise is not a foolish man. He's absolutely clever, too clever. Yeah, Tom Cruise went through a thing. He went through a phase. I don't know what happened to him a couple of years ago, but um, I think he's uh, he's better now, and he is a great actor. A lot of people say a lot of things about Tom Cruise, but uh, in my opinion, he's a pretty good actor. Pretty good actor. Um, yeah. How do you pronounce debuted? That's how we would pronounce it. Debuted. Debuted. All right. Hope that helps. Manuel, welcome to the channel. I am going to be putting in that Discord server link. Join us on Discord. Um, Sita, thank you for the super chat. Thank you all for watching. Again, if you haven't liked, please like the video. It helps other people find it. If you haven't subscribed, well, you could do that so you never miss another lesson. And then maybe share this like Cecilia does. Thank you so much, Cecilia, for sharing. Share this with a friend. Make them happy. Say, hey, I have something that's going to make your English a lot better. So good to see all of you. Hope to see you live real soon again. Adios.